All of our guests appear on the Farm Bureau guest line, but right now we've got Steve Gent in studio, in our Jackson studio. He's just hanging out with Michael Borky. Uh, he is the executive director of the Sanderson Farms Championship. Three weeks from tomorrow, PGA Tour will tee it up in Jackson, Mississippi, at the Country Club of Jackson once again. Steve, so good to see you. What's up, my man? Great to see you guys, too. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And it... I know you say three weeks from tomorrow, but we've got media day next week, Champions Day. Um, our Sunday night pairings party for the Law Machinery Program is two weeks from Sunday. So I wish I had three more weeks. It'd be it'd be great. But uh, we're excited about Until it. Until they actually tee it up, I know, the first I know, competitive I know, I know. ball will be struck three weeks from tomorrow. Yeah, Mike and I were just talking. We were just talking about that about how you know, you know four days of competition and one shot can make the difference between, you know, a two year exemption and the masters and, and $1.476 million. So it's uh so yeah, we're, we're ready to get it started. You brought up money. So let, let's start there. I was just sure. looking at some of the purses for PGA tour events. Obviously you've got the elevated events and, and that's different, but yeah. this tournament and hasn't always been this way is now, very close in terms of purse and winner's share to the farmers. Right. To the Honda, to Valspar, to the Schwab, to the Rocket Mortgage, Fortinet, which is happening this week out on the uh, on the West Coast. Right. The Shriners, which happens in a, in a few weeks, the week after you. So very much on a, a level playing field with a bunch of other tournaments that have been around for a really long time. Yeah, absolutely. And actually – slightly higher than some other events that you know that I, I won't I won't list because I've got some really good other tournament director friends but um <laughs> yeah we're right up there a couple of things you know we have happened over the years I remember when I got here 10 years ago I think our purse was 3.6 um you know we, we became a standalone event in 2019 so that really elevated the, the purse by just over two million dollars um the the tour's new tv rights deal that kicked in in 2021 actually elevated all the purses about seven hundred thousand dollars, and then we go up about three hundred thousand dollars every year. So last year seven point nine, now we're eight point two. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing how uh, what's what's gone on with the purses in golf in the last few years. I feel like because of the history of the Sanderson Farms Championship, we always talk a little bit about schedule, mm -hmm. and I suppose there's some unknown about the future schedule, and that's fine. But this year in particular, so you've got the tournament out in Napa this weekend, the Fortinet Championship. Right. Next weekend is completely open. Off, yep. The weekend week. after that, you've got the Ryder Cup, and, and then you guys follow that. Right. It, it feels like going three weeks or, or two empty weeks between for a lot of players maybe makes this even more attractive than it's been in other years for guys to say, sign me up, I want to play. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I've talked with a lot of the players about throughout this year, looking at the fall schedule since it was announced back in the spring. If you didn't get to Memphis or if you didn't get to Chicago for the for the BMW, um, you've been off for six or seven weeks, right? They are at a certain point in time, I mean the couch is comfortable. It's not that comfortable and, you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't make you any money sitting there. So they're ready to get out and play. I like our week right after the Ryder Cup. Um, we may not get many of the Ryder Cup players, um, but everybody else has been home for now for almost two weeks, ready to start the season. The two weeks after us are Shriners in Vegas and then Zozo in Japan, So, and then another week off. So you could easily start your fall season with go us, Vegas, Japan, and then have a week off and then kind of pick and choose where you want to finish. But – you know, with with what they're doing now with the FedEx Cup points and the and the signature events, if you didn't, you know, the top fifty players are now guaranteed into those signature events next year, the eight tournaments. Um, if you weren't in that top fifty, you certainly don't want to come out of the fall. You know, um, you you want to be fifty one through sixty coming out of the fall. So I think there's a lot of incentive for guys to play in the fall because the top ten at the end of the fall get into the first two signature events, which is. Riviera and you know or Pebble and Riviera, so lot to play for. I think I think guys are, you know, I think I love again. I love our date. I think guys are gonna really to, ready to get out there. So, are are you ahead of where you normally would be in terms of filling out your field, or, or is this and and again yeah. as a reflection of the calendar because guys haven't been playing and and they don't have anything for the next couple of weeks. A lot of them. No, I think we're. I 
I think we might be slightly behind, but I think it's just because you, we wanted to get kind of – I think guys want to get past Labor Day weekend, and now they're going to start to take a look at their schedule. I think we'll see a lot more happen in the next couple of weeks. I like where we are right now. I, you know, I brought I printed out the field as it stands before I walked out of the office 20 minutes ago. But, you know, we've got six past champions, four major winners. You know, all the, the three of the players that are here from Mississippi, Chad Ramey, Hayden Buckley, Davis Riley, are in the field. 26 players in our field have won in the last two years. So we, it's it's very, very strong. And I think it could I think it could get stronger. So now guys have had some time off and they go, hey, I'm ready to kind of start thinking about the fall schedule. I think we'll see a lot in the next couple of weeks. Is this the best year that collectively pros from the state of Mississippi have had on tour and then kind of rolling into to the Sanderson Farms Championship? Yeah, I – I'd, I don't know about ever. I'd have to go back and take a look when, you know, you got guys like Jim Gallagher Jr. And, like, you know, there are several that would have played maybe in terms of where they started or where they finished the season FedEx Cup point wise. Yeah. I mean, it's those three guys alone. Um, you know, Davis won last year in New Orleans. Um, you've got Chad won the year before. I think Hayden's finished second. At, I mean, he, I, you know, he, he, Hayden not can, gonna he's not going to go. He's going to win, you know, within the next short period of time so yeah it it could it could be the strongest we've seen a collective group of young guys from the state for sure have you ever had a a native mississippian win the event i mean we uh you gosh you'd have to go back and 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 look at the i'm not sure if we have yeah Um, but not in recent memory at least no not here recently um we've had a lot play and then someone's gonna probably call and go yeah jen's not thinking of this guy but um I can't think of anybody native Mississippian here off the top of my head right now, unless unless there's just something obvious that I'm missing. So um, yeah. it'd be really great for one of those three. Like I say, I think, again, Hayden, any of those would be great. Any of the 144. I love all the guys that are coming our field. I can't pick favorites, but to have one of those win, this one would be pretty cool. Look, anybody that wins a golf tournament on the PGA Tour is a really, really good golfer. We're talking about one of the elite in the entire world. But yeah. your recent champions have been – pretty special i mean you, you think about mckenzie hughes a year ago and kind of where he's been for the last few years on tour and and you know cam champ a few years back yeah. and, and who's just back yep. back this year yeah i mean if you go you know mckenzie sam right burns who's from two and a half hours away sure um you know in, in the covid year we had sergio sebastian before that and um yeah you know and look what nick taylor did this last year right won our first uh, one at the Country Club in 14, uh, goes on and first Canadian in 50-something years to win the Canadian Open. Uh, I mean, he's had a nice little run here. Um, and that was one of the great scenes from oh all of last year in, we, in professional. We run. put a billboard up like that Monday after with him, you know, the picture of him jumping into his caddy's arms. And, you know, they, they went into extra holes. It was just some cool golf. And, uh, you know, the excitement level up there was was pretty neat. So, um, yeah, I, I – uh, our, our champions here in the last ten years or so have done have done really well. When will you publish the full list of of the field? Um, we kind of wanted to let it get settled. We're, we're announcing a few people on social media. We should have it up on the website before too long. I kind of hate to throw too you know hate to post it too early when there may be still some movement at the bottom. But we'll uh, we'll get up here probably in the next next few days and we'll uh, right. we'll see where it goes. So, so it's uh, it's coming soon. Yes. Uh, visiting with Steve Gent, executive director of the Sanderson Farms Championship. We'll spend one more segment with him after the uh, the break coming up in uh, in just a couple of minutes. But um, in terms of fans, folks in the Jackson Metro area, North Mississippi, from the coast, the Pine Belt, wherever they're coming, that, that are making plans to uh, to come and be a part of the event this year, what do they need to know at, at this point? Yeah, I mean, everything that you would want to know is on our website, SandersonFarmsChampionship.com. Um, we try to make it really easy for fans, right? Um, I think everyone's used to the electronic ticketing. Everything is just going to be right on your phone. Um, parkings at North Park Mall, quick five, maybe 10-minute shuttle ride versus maybe what you see at some other events and tournaments. Uh, we're going to have great food, great concessions. We've got something for everybody. We've got... A really good good fan zone next to the the 18th green, right there on the Cypress One, where we've got jumbotrons to watch, you know, football and golf on the weekend. We've got a, kind of a fun little six hole putting course for kids. Um, you've got uh, the outpost for our first responders and military out on the 10th, um, courtesy of Trustmark and the folks at Gertrude Ford Foundation. We've got the fan pavilion back on 12, which is an upgraded ticket. 
Um, you've got a really cool Mick Ultra deck on 13 where there's 96 calories in a Mick Ultra, and if a player on that par 3 hits it within 96 inches, um, as long as you've bought that Mick Ultra tumbler, refills are a buck for the next 10 minutes. Um, there you go. And, you know, the, and the course is just incredibly walkable for spectators. And, you know, you can see a lot of vistas. It's just a, a fun you know, easy walk, great golf course. We just try to do some things to make it make it fun for, for all of our spectators. We'll talk about this championship, which is, uh, depending on who you ask, either three weeks from tomorrow when it begins or it starts in like a week and a half, uh, at least in terms of how busy yeah. Steve Gent is going to be between now and then. Always appreciate some of your time. I, I said going to the break, let's talk about the golf course. Sure. Um, players have raved about the course in recent years, yeah. especially the greens. The, uh, the grounds crew at, at CCJ does an incredible job in conjunction uh, with some of the people from the, uh, from the PGA Tour. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of condition is the course? And I, I feel like, I mean, it was dry in Jackson for, yeah. for a long stretch of the summer. There's no getting around that. What kind of shapes it in? Yeah, it, it, it's still dry, right? I mean, I, I mean, it was raining as I walked in here. And, I mean, we just wanted to keep raining. But, um, it, the golf course is great. Uh, the CCJ has its own well system, so they've been able to water the golf course. And they're um, thank you know thank you to all the members. I know they've been on cart path here for a couple of weeks to try to keep you know keep the rough really good. If it gets dry and you go through some of the areas, you you um, you know you, you you risk damaging the rough. But um, it, it's in it's going to be in really great shape. Stanley Reedy and his crew of assistants just do a phenomenal job getting it ready. Um, and that's what the players you know talk about all year long when I see him at other events. It's like, Steve, man, those are the best greens on tour. Now we might have the best fairways on tour. Uh, put a sprinkler system in about five years ago that w will water the rough, but not in the landing area. And uh, these guys want it firm and fast. And it's just, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really good. Um, there's there's some dry spots, obviously. You, you just can't get around it in, in this air weather. But the course where they're going to play, I think, is in really good shape. But it's going to be great. Uh... Certainly, uh, reason to uh, reason to be excited. How long will it play for the tournament? Um, you know, they, they, it's kind of funny week in and week out on the tour. I mean, they it's never really played from the tips every hole all day long, right? So, right. I'd have to go back and look at it. I mean, they're probably playing honestly somewhere seventy two, seventy three hundred. I mean, I think it plays seventy five something and change. But if you won to, but. Um, yeah, they they don't you know they'll move things up and back and 15's a drivable four you can move up and um, you know there's a new tee on threes that makes that really long but um from a couple of years ago but yeah they'll never play it from the tips every hole all four days so um, but it's in that range somewhere. You, you mentioned uh, a second ago the the membership and kind of what they have to go through because this is this is their golf course and they kind of turn it over for obviously for the tournament but not just for tournament week. You've told us before about the build out and you know putting the grandstands in and the mm -hmm. tents in and all the hospitality areas and the um, uh, the merchandise tent and just all the stuff that goes into it. Walk us through how long it takes to do that. Yeah, we start. It's about an eight week process for us. I mean, our build is you know there's there's tournaments like Phoenix that start probably six weeks before you know, or six months before, four months yeah. before the tournament. But for us, with our level of build in our community, we start about eight weeks. Um, this week it was a week later because we're a week later, so we started about the second week in in August. Equipment starts to come in from our vendor, Schaefer Sports, comes in from their boneyard in Houston and Birmingham, and and then um, so it's about an eight week. You know, you start with the deck and the scaffolding, and the tents finally go up, and now interiors and all the little details. And then it takes us about a month. We're I mean we're we want to tear down as fast as we can because we want to get out of the memberships way. And, and our, our, you know, Schaefer Sports wants to get to the next job. They don't want their guys, you know, the, the faster they can build up and the faster they can tear down, the faster they can move on to the next job. So, um, but it's about, it's about a four-week tear down between the time we actually have the last piece off the golf course. Um, so it's a, you know, a three-month installation and, and, and tear down. You know, Augusta is one of the, the most unique places on planet Earth, but I've always heard stories about, you know, that last weekend before they completely closed down the course to the members. And, and you know, it's the, the members want to play it in as close to tournament conditions as they can. Um, 
does that opportunity exist for for some of the people at CCJ that kind of last day before it completely turns over to to you guys? Yeah, I mean they play up until I guess dark on it'll, I guess it'll be Sunday September twenty fourth I guess whatever a week from Sunday is and then it'll close for a week, which it really makes a huge difference to how that golf course is for the players when they do finally arrive. Um, but yeah, they can play right up to the and then the Cypress Nine. You know, there's 27 holes out of CCJ, so the right. Cypress Nine is still open for that week. So the membership still has the opportunity to go out and play. It's just on the Cypress Nine for those last six or seven days there. Um, but yeah, we appreciate the membership. What they do allows us to make a great impact to charity. Allows us to make an impact to the state, to their club, um, and uh, it's 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 greatly appreciated to have that extra week before the week of the tournament. Steve Gent visiting with us uh, for a couple of more minutes talking golf as uh, we get ready for the Sanderson Farms Championship coming up uh, in two and a half weeks, three weeks from tomorrow, the opening tee shots for the uh, for the competitive rounds for the, the PGA Tour pros. Um, charity has been a really big part of this, Century Club Charities, and there are a lot of organizations uh, in the state of Mississippi, specifically in the Jackson metro area, that have benefited greatly from from this golf tournament, none more than Children's of Mississippi. All right. Uh, wh- where are we o- on that in terms of donations that are, are going to the hospital? What happened last year, and, and what do you anticipate? Yeah, I get that question all the time. It's like, how how are we looking this year? And I'm like, I don't I don't know. I'm not done yet. Right. Um, <laughs> we're at two and a half weeks to go. We deal. We do still have seven Wednesday pro am teams available. If anybody out there is uh, in in the market for a program team, but I would tell you hospitality has gone very well, uh, both you know in the in the private and semi-private areas. Uh, you know we don't really know how we're going to do merchandise wise, although I think we have the best merchandise on the PGA Tour. Everyone loves the Rooster logo. Um, Women's Day, we, we've got a great Women's Day luncheon this year with Aaron Brockovich as our guest speaker. That is almost sold out. You know, we really, really, you know, don't really know until afterwards when we count gate. Fan pavilion, concessions, everything like that. So, I think we're on track to have another really, really good year. Um, you know, we're, we we try to be good stewards of the expenses, and you know, hope that the community comes out in a big way and supports it. Um, and uh, we'll find out here. It takes us, gosh, by the time we get bills and and then we get paid, it, it takes almost a Thanksgiving until we really know exactly what kind of year we have. But I think we're on track for another. You know, historically, really, really good year. So, and what was it? Uh, was it late January last year when um, the the Century Club Charities Group handed over a million dollar check to to Children's of Mississippi? Is that right? Yeah, we tend to do it kind of. We kind of look at January and see kind of where we can fit in and kind of have our our own day on the news cycle, right? So, but it tends to be kind of mid to late January. And yeah, another one point one to Children's through friends, and um, another four hundred thousand. To about another fifty plus Mississippi charities like Stew Pot, First Tea, um, you know, Make a Wish, Mustard Seed. I mean, just just a, a variety. Magnolia Speech School. There's just it, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, it's you know, I know you know a million dollars to the hospital is a, a big deal, but for some of these charities, for us to be able to give a check for five thousand or seven thousand or three thousand yeah. dollars, it it's a big deal. So we want to, about 80% of it will always go to children's, but we really want to impact everybody in the community if we can. Last thing for you, um, the, the, the bus that we ride in and out every year is, is the same bus that the volunteers for the uh, event ride out. You have an incredible right. volunteer staff and, Absolutely. and a lot of the people that come back year after year after year. Is there an opportunity still if somebody wants to get involved, or is that passed for this no, year? We will, that we will, ne- we will never turn down help. I mean, we. I would tell you that we've been very fortunate that a lot of our local corporate partners also take responsibility for a whole. So Atmos Energy will sponsor a whole, and Regions Bank will sponsor a whole, and again, Friends of Children's Hospital will do a whole. Um, but there's always opportunities for singles to, to kind of or two people to get in together and, and go here and there. Um, we will never turn that down. That, that information is on the website, too, SandersonFarmsChampionship.com. Actually, this week, we've got uniform distribution going on at our office while we speak. It started Monday from, from 10 to 6 every day. So it's been fun to see all the volunteers come in and get their hat and their shirt and their jacket. We've had, uh, we've had Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches out there at lunch every day for them. And uh, it, we can't do it without them. It takes about 1,000 volunteers. But, yeah, if you, if you have the itch to spend 
you know, four hours out on a gorgeous day watching the 144 of the best players in the world, we will sign you up. So have you have you ordered up the weather yet? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be exactly like last year. There won't be a cloud in the sky. It's going to be like 55 at night, you know, maybe 80, 81 during the day. That's <laughs> that's what the order is for. So, yeah. um, no, nah, I think I, it will be a week later, so it might be a, a little chillier, a little, you know, a little drier. Um, I think it's, it's going to be great. I think it's going to be awesome. One of the lasting images for me, I was uh, I was filling in for Paul Gallo, so we had the 6 a.m. start on uh, on Friday morning. Uh, for his show. So I got to the golf course, at, you know, a little bit after five. And as I kind of crested the hill uh, by the clubhouse coming down to where we were set up uh, yeah. a year ago and, and saw that uh, the the convoy of lawnmowers with lights coming yeah. up the fairway, just a, a really, really cool look. So many yeah. people work so hard, in, including you, Steve. We appreciate, as always, your Thank time. You. I, I we appreciate wish you, you the best and yep. can't wait to be there with you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you. And, um, Again, SandersonFarmsChampionship.com is everything you want to know about the tournament, and we'll see everybody out there in a couple weeks. Thank you. Sounds great. You can get your ticket.